Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about Zetia. Zetia, or Ezetimib, that's a drug that was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in 2002 to reduce the absorption of cholesterol from the small intestine. It could be purchased by itself, or it could be combined with a statin. For instance, Vitorin is 10 milligrams of Zetia and 40 milligrams of the statin known either as Zocor or Simvastatin. It was also sold for a while between 2013-2015 combined with a Torvastatin. That didn't seem to be much of a seller. Now, the first thing you should do if your cholesterol is elevated, if your bad cholesterol, the LDL, is elevated, you should change your lifestyle. You should eat better, you should reduce your weight, and you should get more physical activity. And even though people say they've tried, you haven't tried hard enough. You haven't changed your diet appropriately. Now, how does that work? Well, it's said to work, as I mentioned, by reducing the cholesterol uptake, but it also has been claimed to be an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory drug, reduce the insulin resistance, work against platelet clumping, preventing blood clots, and reducing the high sensitivity CRP, the C-reactive protein. Well, it's going to decrease the cholesterol absorption by about 50% by targeting a particular enzyme. And it's also going to decrease the cholesterol delivery to the liver, decrease the cholesterol synthesis in the liver, deplete the liver's stores of the LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, upregulate the LDL receptors on the surface of the liver cells so that the liver cells are going to gobble up some of the extra LDL that's circulating around in your bloodstream and supposedly all that is going to lead to a reduction in LDL and then you'll live happily ever after, at least so the saying goes. So it's going to decrease your bad cholesterol, LDL, decrease the total cholesterol, decrease the ApoB, decrease your triglycerides and it's supposed to increase your HDL, just a smidgen. So if we look at about two weeks worth of therapy, it's going to decrease the LDL somewhere between 12 and 20 percent, decrease the triglycerides by 7 to 10 percent, decrease the cholesterol, total cholesterol by maybe about 12 percent. Well, let's look at combining it now with the simvastatin. So if we look at Zetia plus simvastatin, what's going to happen? Let's talk about the LDL. Well, if we use the Zetia by itself, the LDL might decrease by as much as 19 percent. Zocor, the symphostatin, might push the LDL down 27 percent, but if you combine the two together, it could drop the LDL by about 50 percent. If we look at the triglycerides, triglycerides with Zetia alone fall by about 11%, fall by another 14% with the simvastatin, combine the two together, and we get a 26% reduction. But so what? That's just a number. The real issue is, does it reduce the likelihood that you're going to have some kind of cardiovascular event or die from a cardiovascular event? And the FDA on the package insert says, the effect of Zetia on cardiovascular mortality and morbidity has not been determined. Well, they came out with a study in 2008, at least it was published in 2008, it was called the Enhanced Trial. It looked at people who had genetic abnormalities that led to elevated cholesterol, and it was found that there was no benefit, repeat, no benefit of adding Zetia to the simvastatin. There was no decrease in the heart attack, no decrease in the stroke, and as a matter of fact, it seemed to increase the deposition of plaque in the arterial wall. Well, actually the study was completed in 2006. It was just published in the New England Journal in 2008. And it was only published after continued pressure by the medical community to get the thing published because the major pharmaceutical companies were kind of reluctant because the drug was a cash cow. It was bringing in about four billion dollars in sales. And the study showed that the drug didn't seem to reduce the cardiovascular mortality or morbidity. So, at least according to Dr. Steve Nesson, 
who is one of the pioneers in cardiovascular medicine and chief at the Cleveland Clinic, he's just said there isn't any evidence to add Zetia to Simvastatin. It doesn't produce any advantage. 2015, there was a meta-analysis looking at all of the studies that had been published, looking at Zetia with the Simvastatin, just combined or, or looking at that versus the Simvastatin by itself or any statin by itself. And actually, there was no benefit, again, to adding the Zetia to the statin drug. There was no benefit from all-cause mortality, no benefit from cardiovascular disease-related death or non-cardiovascular disease-related death or heart attacks or cancer or even stroke. So we don't really care what the number is. We care what the outcome is. Well, most recently, there was another study. It was published again in the New England Journal of Medicine just in June of 2015. It was called Improve It. It was funded by Merck. Improve It looked at 18,000 individuals. Now, cardiovascular disease is pretty common, and high LDL is pretty common. But for them to get 18,000 individuals on the study, it took 1147 different sites throughout the world in 39 countries in countries like Turkey and Ukraine and South Africa, Slovakia, India and Hungary and Ecuador and Colombia and Estonia and Brazil and Chile to get some data on these 18,000 people. The 18,000 people were high-risk patients. They were high-risk. They had unstable angina or they had recently had a heart attack. Their LDL at the beginning of the study was somewhere between 50 and 100. That's pretty good if they were on a statin. If they weren't on a statin, it was between 50 and 125. Still, pretty doggone good. The patients were given either the Zocor by itself, 40 milligrams, or given Zetia plus 40 milligrams of Zocor. And these people had significant cardiovascular disease. As I mentioned, they were recently hospitalized. And the study evaluated the outcomes. It was a six-year study. And they looked at a combination endpoint. So if you had either cardiovascular disease-related death or a non-fatal heart attack, non-fatal stroke, or you had to have revascularization because of unstable angina, well, you were considered to make an endpoint. But even during the study, they changed the protocol. They amended the protocol five times. That's not very good. That's like changing the book as you're reading it. You don't do that. You set the guidelines, and then you follow the guidelines. But what was the end result of the study? Well, according to the study, there was a major improvement in cardiovascular outcomes. If we look at the combination group, the group received the Zetia and the Statin, the incidence of that primary event was 32.7%. If we look at people who received the Zocor alone, well, 34.7% of those people reached that primary endpoint. In other words, had some kind of an event. So the absolute difference was only 2%, and the benefits didn't even occur until after the first year. And if we look at the lowering of the LDL, or the bad cholesterol, yes, it was lowered a little bit more. If you took the combination medicine, it was about 54, your bad cholesterol. If you took just the Zocor, it was about 69. Well, again, we don't really care what the numbers are. What's the difference as far as the cardiovascular outcomes are concerned? No difference in all-cause mortality, cardiovascular-related disease, death, no change in the incidence of death from coronary heart disease, fatal heart attack, hemorrhagic stroke, revascularization, hospitalization for unstable angina. There was a smidgen of a difference in non-fatal heart attacks and a little more than one-half of one percent difference in the incidence of ischemic stroke. But overall, here's the kicker. There was no statistically significant improvement in people receiving the Zetia plus the statin versus the statin alone. 
if you were a man, if you were less than 75 years old, if you were non-Caucasian, and if you were Caucasian, there was only a smidgen of a benefit. There wasn't any benefit if you were a diabetic, if you were a current smoker, and just a smidgen of a benefit if you were a non-smoker. No benefit if you had normal blood pressure. If you had hypertension, a smidgen of a benefit. Improve it, even with the drug company involvement, even with very high risk patients, even with very low LDL, there was still no significant benefit. It mirrored the results of the trial that we talked about a few moments ago that they finished in 2006 and hid until 2008. But remember, the companies were making a significant amount of money from the drug. Well, if we look at the surrogate markers, and that's what so many of these studies do, they look at the LDL, the total cholesterol, the triglycerides, and you get so excited because you say, oh my goodness, it made the numbers go down. But who cares? Who cares? We care as far as what is the outcome. Do you have fewer heart attacks? Do you have fewer strokes? Do you need less revascularization? And at least at the present time, it would appear that the drug doesn't cut it. Now remember I said the package insert said the effect of Zeti on cardiovascular mortality and morbidity has not been determined. Well, with the results of Improve It, the study that just came out in 2015, the company went to the FDA and said, hey, why don't you say that one of the indications is that this drug can decrease the risk of cardiovascular events. It can decrease the risk of heart attack and stroke and cardiovascular related disease death. FDA thought about it for about a moment and said, you know, the study is too small and it's limited to certain patients and it really doesn't cut it. So no, we won't change the package insert. Well, how do you take the drug? It's an oral drug. You can take it with or without food. The peak absorption is somewhere between about 4 and 12 hours. It's metabolized in the small intestine and the liver. The half-life of the drug is about... 22 hours, so you only have to take it once a day. You don't have any good information that it's safe for pregnant women or nursing women. Certainly if you have active liver disease or moderate to severe chronic liver disease, you shouldn't take this drug. If you have unexplained elevation of your liver function test, don't take the drug. There's no issue with kidney disease. Side effects are really not significant. Remember, the statin drugs are associated with the muscle pain. Not so with Zeti. It's not toxic to the muscle. No rhabdomyolysis. Generally, no drug interactions. Got to be a little careful with some cyclosporin or some fibrates or drugs like Tricor. Became generically available in December 2016 no other copycat drugs, but in 2016, just to tell you how big a seller this is, Zetia had sales of two and a half billion dollars and Vitorin sales in excess of a billion dollars. Now in 2017, the sales were around two billion dollars. The sales are off since 2011, but they've increased the price of the drug. They keep increasing the price of the drug even though they haven't done anything different with the drug. Same chemical they discovered long time ago, brought to market a long time ago. They just keep increasing the price. So if you want the generic version and you want to pay cash and you go over to Albertson, Safeway or Vaughn's, it's going to be 300 bucks. On the other hand, if you go over and you want to pay cash, and you stopped off at Costco, the drug would be $42. Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, $60 to $80. So you go figure out why there's such a big difference in the price, the cash price. If you have a coupon, it's $13 to $15. Now, as an example of what they've done on the price, if you look at the fourth quarter in 2009, the drug was selling, the name brand, was selling for $3.23 a pill. The price increased to the fourth quarter in 2015 to $7.88 a pill. If you buy the brand name, you buy the Zetia instead of the generic form, cash price is going to be $438. With coupon, it's going to be $360. And if you buy the Vitorin, 
that's the combination of the zevia and the simvastatin, well, the price on the generic drug is going to be somewhere in excess of $225 cash, or if you buy the brand name instead, the price for that's going to be about $450. And by the way, if you go over to the store, you go over to the Walmart, you can get a month worth of simvastatin, that's the Zocor, generic Zocor, 40 milligram pill, you can get that for $4. And you can buy the generic Zetia if you wanted, on prescription, for less than $15. So why spend $200, $300, $400 just to take it as a single solitary pill? So basically, after the drug has flopped, they keep trying to resurrect it. But the irony now is the drug is off patent, so generics are available. So I suspect we're probably going to be bombarded with some advertisements in the near future because of the most recent study. But from what we've discussed, the pill just doesn't seem like it ought to have a future. If you'd like to know more about cholesterol, cholesterol lowering, you want to know more about the Zocor, the Lipitor, some of the other medicines, watch some of the other videos that we have on this channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Ken Landau. Thank you.